Hello everyone, in this video we'll be learning about the first step of cellular respiration, the glycolysis. Remember, respiration is a process in which organic molecules are used to release energy. So we can say that organic molecules act as a fuel. But there's a major difference here in man-made machines, how the fuel is used to release energy and how it's used in cells. In a car engine, the fuel is burnt, energy is released and used to do some work. But if energy is released from a fuel all at once in a cell, it cannot be harnessed efficiently for constructive work. For example, uh, if a gasoline tank explodes, it cannot drive a car very far. So cellular respiration does not oxidize glucose in a single explosive step. Rather, glucose and other organic fuels are broken down in a series of steps, each one catalyzed by an enzyme, which we will not be learning most of the enzymes in this chapter. At key steps, electrons are stripped from the glucose, as is often the case in oxidation reactions, and, ele and each electron travels with a proton, thus as a hydrogen atom. If we roll down the rock on this step, right, energy will be released in small quantities, but the total amount of energy will equal to the total amount of energy when we drop the rock down. So cellular respiration is not one single burning reaction. Rather, glucose and other organic fuels are broken down in a series of steps, and each one is catalyzed by an enzyme. And at key steps, electrons are stripped from the glucose. As is often the case in oxidation reactions, each electron travels with a proton, thus as a hydrogen atom. The hydrogen atoms are not transferred directly to oxygen, but instead are usually passed first to an electron carrier, a shuttle bus, a coenzyme called NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. There is also another molecule, FAD, the flavonoid adenine dinucleotide, which also serves as an electron carrier. These coenzymes are hydrogen carriers, or we can also call them as the electron carrier. Glucose molecule has a great potential energy and directly reacting with oxygen will just release the energy all at once, which cannot be harnessed properly. Rather than that, electrons, so the hydrogen atoms, are stripped off from the glucose and from other intermediate compounds throughout the cellular respiration stages. And these hydrogens, so the electrons, are carried. So these coenzyme NAD and FAD serve perfect shuttle buses. NAD is well suited as an electron carrier because it can cycle easily between an oxidized NAD plus form and the reduced NADH state. As an electron acceptor, the NAD plus functions as an oxidizing agent during respiration. Here you can see an oxidized NAD. Well, we just call this NAD. Okay taking up two electron and one hydrogen ion and being reduced, right? Reduced. So it's either called as reduced NAD or NADH. But Cambridge prefers reduced NAD. Well, how does NAD trap electrons from glucose and other organic molecules? Well, actually enzymes called dehydrogenases remove a pair of hydrogen atoms, which means two electrons and two protons from the substrate. So this is one hydrogen, and this is the other hydrogen. And the enzyme dehydrogenase removes them off. And we get NADH plus hydrogen. Let me remind you that one hydrogen atom means hydrogen ion which is also called as a proton in this case because there is no neutron in hydrogen and electron that makes hydrogen atom so a pair of hydrogen atom here and here means two electrons and two protons or two hydrogen ions by receiving two negatively charged electrons but only one positively charged proton NAD plus has its charge neutralized when it is reduced to NADH and the name NADH shows the hydrogen that has been received in this reaction. So NAD plus is the most versatile electron acceptor in cellular respiration and functions in several of the redox steps during the breakdown of glucose throughout the cellular respiration. You can see the process summarized here. So NAD plus receiving two hydrogen atom, meaning that two electron and two proton, right? 
two electron and one proton is used to reduce the NAD and one hydrogen ion, one proton is released into the surrounding. So this forms the reduced NAD plus a hydrogen ion. Cellular respiration can be divided into four stages. Glycolysis, link reaction, Krebs cycle, and oxidative phosphorylation. Okay, let's point the locations of these four stages in the cell. So this whole structure here is the mitochondrion. So as you can see, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm and link reaction in the mitochondrion. The Krebs cycle, the other name is citric acid cycle, is in the mitochondrion. And again, the oxidative phosphorylation stage is in the mitochondrion. The first stage of glycolysis, keep in mind in this video, I'm keeping the information limited to the A2 biology. Since it's a series of chemical processes, enzymes are involved, but you don't need to know any of these enzymes and you don't get to know the real names of these intermediate products in A2 biology. Well, the word glycolysis means splitting off the glucose. If I were to sum up the glycolysis, I would say that it's a multi-step process in which a glucose molecule with six carbon atoms is eventually split into two molecules of pyruvate, which has each one of them has three carbon atoms. So we start with the glucose, which is a hexose sugar, meaning that containing six carbon. The very first stage of glycolysis is the phosphorylation of the glucose molecule by using ATP. Now, glucose is energy rich, but does not react easily. To tap the bond energy of glucose, energy must be first used to make the reaction easier. So two ATP molecules are used for each molecule of glucose to make first glucose phosphate and then fructose phosphate, then the fructose biphosphate, then which breaks down to produce two molecules of triose phosphate. So that's the first stage of glycolysis. Phosphorylation of glucose, in other words, adding phosphate to the glucose molecule has two purposes. One, activating the glucose, making it react well. Secondly, maintaining the glucose concentration in and out of the cell. So once glucose is phosphorylated, it's not chemically glucose anymore. So the concentration gradient can be maintained. So in the first stage of the glycolysis, energy is actually used up. Two ATP molecules are used to phosphorylate the glucose, so eventually the hexose biphosphate is formed. And in the end of the first stage, two triose phosphate, meaning that two molecules with three carbon containing are formed. So far, up to here, energy is not released yet. Okay, in the next stage, hydrogen is then removed from the triose phosphate and transfer to the carrying molecule NAD. Remember, the enzyme that splits or breaks off hydrogens from the molecules called it a dehydrogenase. So the removal of hydrogen process is called a dehydrogenation. So two molecules of reduced NAD are produced, as you can see here, and the hydrogens carried by the reduced NAD can easily be transferred to other molecules and are used in oxidative phosphorylation to generate ATP that we will see in another video. You can also see in the second stage that two ATP molecule here and two ATP there. So totally four ATP molecules are formed. And these ATP molecules are formed by the substrate level phosphorylation of ADP with inorganic phosphate. Substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, let me make a very quick summary. So we start with the glucose, which is a hexose sugar, six carbon containing sugar. This glucose is phosphorylated by two ATP molecules. So there has to be two phosphate containing, okay, hexose biphosphate, meaning that it has, it has six carbon containing compound with two phosphates in it. This then splits into two trios, meaning three carbon, three carbon compounds. So far, this first stage of glycolysis is energy using. So two ATP molecules are used. Okay, ATP, so energy is used. 
So second stage is from this three carbon containing trios to again three carbon pyruvate. Three carbon, three carbon. But why there are two? Because one glucose molecule, two triols, and two pyruvate molecules are formed eventually. What happens in between? Remember dehydrogenation. So hydrogen atom splits and taken away. So reduced NAD is formed. Okay. And two ATP molecules are formed. It's the same for this one as well. So in so in glycolysis, at the first stage, two ATP molecules are used up. But in the second stage, totally four ATP molecules are formed, are released, and two reduced NAD molecules are formed. Okay, let's finish this video with a past paper question. The metabolic pathway in which a hexose sugar, such as glucose, is broken down in respiration by cells starts with glycolysis. And figure 1 1 outlines the key stages of glycolysis. State where in the cell glycolysis takes place. Remember, glycolysis takes place in cytoplasm. B. Name substance A. So, let's outline the basic steps again. We have the hexose sugar, which is 6 carbon, the glucose. Right? And eventually, this 6 carbon sugar splits into 2 3 carbon sugar, the triose phosphate. So, the one in the middle is actually again a 6 carbon sugar which is a hexose but remember ATP is used two ATP molecules are used to phosphorylate this hexose sugar so that's a hexose biphosphate you don't need to remember any specific name here hexose biphosphate is sufficient explain why the hexose is converted to substance A so why hexose is converted into hexose biphosphate why phosphorylation Two reasons for phosphorylation. First of all, the glucose or the hexose sugar is energy rich but not very reactive. So to activate, to activate the hexose sugar. And the second reason is to maintain the concentration gradient. Maintain concentration gradient. This is all for this video. We'll talk about the other stages in other videos.